Now, another thing is the I-407. This is when someone wants to abandon their uh, green card, not happen anymore. Now, sometimes uh, someone, you know, has a green card. They've been off for 10 years. They don't want it anymore, but then um, they want to come back and they may have like a U.S. citizen child. The U.S. citizen child wants to refile that 130 for him. Do you need to, uh, you know, uh, affirmatively abandon the green card and file a 9407? Well, you know, it, I've done this where we didn't need to because there's the automatic assumption of abandonment on once you're out for more than a year, I think it is. So it's not mandatory, but nowadays um, I, I would do it to be safe. Now, a colleague sent a, a Foreign Affairs Manual section 9FAM 202.2-4C, and I'm, it says, there's no legal restriction preventing an LPR from attaining another immigrant visa in a different preference category. Okay, that also, I'll be, that's, that's an interesting thing. But essentially, um, the FAM kind of says you don't have to get a new visa. Uh, you don't have to abandon the old one to get a new one. They'll, they could assume it. But nowadays, it's safer to do it. I haven't filed one. I'm going to be filing I-407 for pretty soon the first time. I remember two or three years ago, uh, one of our colleagues in Washington State, uh, his name, he does a lot of lawsuits. Jay Garrick told me he filed an I-407. Because they updated how the 407 works, you have to mail it into like a lockbox location of some sort, and they kept returning it, saying it's not valid. Uh, previously, people would try to go through the CBP port to do it and see, and it's not accepted. So, what I'm going to do is mail it in according to the I-407 new instructions to see what happens. But be prepared for that kind of stuff. Ideally, you never want to file an I-407. Uh, but in, in that note, I reference 9FAM 202.4C. It says there's no legal restriction preventing a LPR from obtaining another immigrant visa in a different preference status in order to confer derivative status on a spouse or child. There's also no requirement that the alien resident abandon his LPR status. So what does this mean? So let's say you have a green card, but you want um, your spouse and kid to get it. So you file for another work visa and then the, the kid and spouse could get in on that and could come in. It's kind of a weird situation. Uh, and I, I don't sure where this would come up, but that's, you know, it's there. It's family. You read it. So again, I'll read it. There's no legal restriction preventing an LPR, a green card holder, from obtaining another immigrant visa in a different preference category in order to confer derivative status on a spouse or child. There is also no requirement that the alien resident abandon his LPR status. So whether they're going to get another green card because the, the principal has to get a, a, another immigrant visa that's and, and do land at entry um, before it goes to the spouse and child. So you know, that's that. Uh, you know, I use this word landed entry, landed immigrant. My wife was watching a TV show yesterday and she's like, they keep they talking about immigration, they keep talking about landing immigrant. Uh, and landing immigrant is, is a term that Canadian immigration we use, not the US immigration. Um, and so I was like, why are they using that? But they have something like that. Um, yeah, no, landed immigrants is a Canadian thing. It's like if you're a green card in Canada. So that's that's that. So that's the term. So be careful, you know, not careful, who knows what the I-407, uh, but I do you never want to deal with that if you don't have to.